Uh, okay, so let's start here. By what year would it be the case that if you make it to that year, technology will keep in bio will keep progressing to such an extent that your lifespan will increase by oh, yeah. a year every year or more? Right. Escape velocity is sometimes what it's called for right. aging. Um, different people have estimates, and all of those estimates are, including mine, are going to be uh, take with a big grain sure. of salt. I think that looking at how mainly looking at the exponentials mm. in biotechnology and the progress that's been made in understanding, not just understanding the causes of aging, but seeing real examples where you can reverse subsets of the aging phenotype. You know, so you're getting close to all of aging. Um, in other words, you're seeing, instead of just saying, oh, I'm gonna fix the damage in this collagen, in this, uh, um, tendon in this limb, you're saying, oh, I'm going to change a lot of things that, that, are, that are common to age-related diseases, and I'm going to get more than one at a time. I think looking at those two phenomena, the exponentials in biotechnologies and the, the breakthrough in general uh, aging, um, not, just observa not just analysis, but synthesis and, and, and therapies, and a lot of these therapies are now making in the clinical trials. I would not, wouldn't be surprised if 2050 would be a point, um, if we can make it to that point, uh, 25 years. Most people listening to this have a good chance of making it 25 years. And the thing is, it's not going to be some s mm -hmm. sudden point where you're going to be, you know, so sick 25 years from now that it's like hit or miss. It's more likely that, that you're going to be healthier than you, 25 yeah. years from now than you thought you were going to be. Um, and um, yeah, but it's, it's hard to say. I mean, it, it, there may be some, probably not some law of physics, but some economic or complexity issue that we don't know about that, that becomes a brick wall. I doubt it seriously, but we'll have to see. Mm. Given the number of things you would have to solve to uh, get, give us a lifespan of humpback whales. Bowhead, there, bowhead whales. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. 200 years, yeah. Is there any hope for doing that from somatic gene therapy alone, or would that have to be germline gene therapy? Probably there's a, a lot of forces pushing it towards somatic. Um, for one, there's 8 billion right. people that have missed the, the germline opportunity. Yeah. That's to say, doesn't apply to us. Uh, the two of us and everybody listening to this. Um, and, you know, it's, you have to be very cautious when you say something's impossible. It's, it's safe to say it's impossible to do it this second, but you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow in the next decade or something. Uh, so I, I, I think there's a lot that could be done. Um, in particular, since aging is a fairly um, cellular phenomenon with, proteins going through the blood and other factors going through the blood that signaling and so forth. Uh, you could imagine if you replaced, let's say, every cell in the body, every nucleus in the body, left, you know, mm. um, they would, it would suddenly be young again, right, w without going all the way back to the embryo and forward again. Um, and there's various other things that are just short of that. If you, if you replace the cells, um, will they, you know, they'll fit into that niche they might displace the old cells, you know, that, that, that's within, certainly within the realm of modern synthetic biology is to, is to, for cells to take over niches. I think the hardest part is the brain, but even there, you know, there's some evidence that, that if you bring, even though the brain doesn't really use stem cells that much, you could artificially bring in stem cells and they could artificially fit into a circuit and learn the, mm -hmm. the circuit and then displace the old ones in some way. Ship of Theseus kind of thing in the brain? Yeah, exactly. Ship of Theseus. Uh, having, um, you know, trying to maintain the connections and the, the memories. Uh, but, but, you know, there's some fairly straightforward experiments that need to be done before we can really even estimate how, how hard that problem is. Or, you know, very often there's low-hanging fruit that people just think is improbable, but it's there because biology has all these gifts the, you know, where the, uh, just hands over to us uh, levers that we can uh, flip, like like vaccines is an amazing gift. It didn't have to exist, but they, they do. Yeah. yeah. 
Is there an existing gene delivery mechanism which could deliver gene therapy to every single cell in the body? There is nothing close to that today, but there's nothing, no law of physics that would prevent it. You know, there's there's going to be prag practical considerations, you know, like, you know, how many injections do you need to do um, to, get, to achieve that goal? But we're getting better at targeting tissues. You know, so for one of my companies, Dino Therapeutics, um, showed they could get a hundredfold improvement in targeting uh, neurons in the brain, um, which is a big deal. Uh, now, if, if and that was just one little campaign that they did, you know, that, that uh, one experiment involved a lot of AI and a lot of uh, testing of millions of different uh, capsids. If you did that with cells, or capsids are, are fairly limited in the diversity and the, and the structure that it c can change to, but cells have even more uh, possibilities. I think you could probably get delivery to everything. Mm -hmm. You know, and the question is, how close to 100% do you need to get, right? And it's going to vary from tissue to tissue. Um, you know, some, you know, for example, for some therapies, you just need to get 1% because that 1% can produce some missing enzyme. And, and the 1% doesn't have to necessarily be in its normal place, right? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you, can, you can turn a muscle into part of the immune system temporarily for a vaccine. You can, um, you know, uh, an enzyme that's normally made in, let's say, the brain, you could make in the liver, right? If, it, if the point is just to get it into the blood. So uh, I think we're, that's moving along quite well. If you enjoyed this clip, you can watch the full episode here and subscribe for more clips. Thanks.